Scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog podcast, covering, rather surprisingly, not Doctor Who. You see, I've been smitten by the exciting world of Blake 7. And, for those of you who don't know, Blake 7 is, as far as most people are concerned, i.e. fans of the classic series, kind of a sister show to Doctor Who. Neil Perriman instigated the whole Adventures with the Wife in Space about Doctor Who, and the sister book... Well, Adventures with the Wife and Blake. There were four series of Blake 7. Blake disappears at the end of Series 2, only to reappear at the end of Series 4. Series 4 has traditionally been seen as the programme that's got a massive downer at the end. Although if you listen very carefully, you will hear a familiar gunshot being the last one fired. But that is fan speculation, and indeed, spoilers. Now, I promised you I would cover Blake 7, and I will, in the wonderful guise of Big Finish. Yes, I am a Big Finish fan, and I am a Blake 7 fan, and I am a Doctor Who fan. The first full cast Big Finish story to come out of Big Finish Towers was called Warship. Now, I've called it Warship 0.1 because it's the first release, and it was kind of, well, a pilot If you remember my reviews of the Liberator Chronicles, which were akin to the Companion Chronicles of Doctor Who releases, where you had a story told with one or perhaps two actors, but it was told with aplomb and passion and characterisation, and they were brilliant. But in my head, their talking books, their stories... Full cast narrative are basically TV without the pictures. Slightly better. Because you've got, as far as you can manage it, the original cast performing characters that you know and love, and they look the same in your head, and these things fit perfectly into the storylines. Now, one of the things that's wonderful about Blake 7 is that in between Series 2 and Series 3, there is a massive galactic invasion, or an attempted one. And you finish and you go, oh my god, it's going to be brilliant, everything's gone horribly wrong, it's all built to a wonderful arc, and then it jumps to the aftermath. The story's actually called Aftermath of this attempted invasion. And you know, even as a child, I felt not cheated. No, cheated is the wrong word. What I felt is, is that I'd missed something. I'd missed the battle. I'd missed what happened. I'd missed the fight. I'd missed the incredibly expensive BBC special effects department and their brilliant models blowing each other up a bit like Star Wars and then being an adult, thinking back, you know, that was never going to happen because the spaceships were basically glorified, glued together, plant pots flying at each other. There is... There is a popular fan myth that this invading fleet from another galaxy with the Daleks. It's a Terry Nation plot, and an excuse to bring them in. But let's face it, in the Doctor Who universe, I, for one, would say that the Daleks belong in, well, our galaxy. These were invaders from Andromeda, purely alien in nature. Now, I don't want to spoil too much. I don't want to assume you've even seen Blake 7, because not everyone has. Think Firefly, but on a 1970s budget. Or Babylon 5. No, Crusade. Yeah, it's a bit more Crusade, but it's closer to Firefly being fugitives run the run from... Well, it's also seen by many people as the anti-Star Trek. The logo for the TV series is basically the Starfleet symbol on its side, 
and there's an argument can be made for that. It's the BBC's anti-Star Trek. The villains in this are actually called the Federation. There are many strange alien worlds, and the actual cohesive nature of it all is as spurious as original Star Trek. You've got main characters who are villains, and if it wasn't for the fact that she's a woman, she would be twiddling her moustache in the most theatricals of fashion. So that's the universe we're in. Think, yeah, Firefly. It's one spaceship, one fantastically, gloriously designed, beautiful spaceship, which is just better than everyone else's. And a crew, idealists, robbers, thieves, people just along for the ride, giants, accidental murderers, that kind of people. A lot of, well, anti-heroes. There's Villa, there's Avon, there's Blake, they're the main characters. But there are many, many underserved female characters, people with massive amounts of potential. And that's where Big Finish live. That's where they belong. The world of untapped potential is where Big Finish step up and go, yep, that's for us. We'll take over from here and we'll fill in the blanks and we'll do it better than anyone could have imagined. They've done it so well with, well, the sixth Doctor. So here we have Blake Seven. Now, you've got a year between the first release and the second lot, the the actual main series turning up. So this is this is a pilot, and it could so easily have failed because everyone has aged. And let's face it, some of the themes are questionable in the world post tree. What is important is that it's just plain brilliant. Warship is the story of the battle between series two and three. It is the events that lead to Blake's departure from the series. It is just plain fantastic. It feels in its pacing, in its delivery, in its just pure essence, an absolute, not even a homage. It's just a missing episode you just can't watch. And for people like us brought up on Doctor Who that you could no longer see, It fits perfectly. If you're looking for something to fill the gap between Doctor Who's, Blake Seven's a great starting point. And if you want to experience something you missed when you watched the original series, or even if you've been reading The Wife and Blake, and you're going, oh, I just wish we could have had that battle. Well, here it is. And of course, it's got a bigger budget than the BBC. It's got a planet called Megiddo. It's got weaponry. It's got a massive plasma bomb. It's got, well, it's got Servalan. Admittedly, not in a massive part, but she does turn up and she will be back for something darker and something better. Villa is perfectly portrayed. The guy has not aged. His voice is the same and everything's fantastic. But then you've got Avon, the villain and the hero of the piece, The man who is just so damn creepy and brilliant that he just, well, is the show. And as far as the actor's concerned, Paul Darrow, it might as well have been called Avon Seven. So, I heartily, wholeheartedly, unreservedly recommend Warship to you. Because it's just plain brilliant. Now, the rest of these stories fit rather haphazardly into the surviving gaps between stories. So, I will be reviewing them. And this story was the first story, the release, the pilot. The other stories fit rather more sporadically throughout the whole run of Blake 7. So, I will bid you farewell, leave you with the trailer, and let you make up your own mind. So until next time, be seeing you. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Blake 7. Warship. We came here to deliver a death blow to the Federation. There they are. I wanted to tear down Star One forever. But there's hundreds of ships. Hundreds. Star One has another purpose. It controls a satellite minefield, a barrier between our galaxy and the next. We're under attack. Then, initiate pattern sigma positioning. Random maneuvers at your discretion. Confirm. Can you see all those mines? Hundreds of them. They're burrowing into the outer hull. Two more ships are through. Should we pursue? Leave it. Stay focused on the gap in the grid. Goodbye, Blake. I wish I could say it's been a pleasure. Savalan, fire! Subscribers get more at bigfinish.com
You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who is the property of the BBC and no infringement is intended. To contact the show or to find out more about Hoostrology and my other works, click on the links on the Tin Dog Podcast homepage. Why not follow Blue Box Messiah, or one word, on Twitter to keep up to date with tour dates of my forthcoming Doctor Who comedy play. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. <laughs>